Council in Zanesville, Ohio, Evangelist Gooden and uh, uh, Brother Curtis uh, LaFleur. Uh, who else? Uh, my wife was with us down there, and so, and Sister Jackie Freeman, do I see here those that were there, uh, outstanding word, uh, amen, by Suffragan Bishop Tyson on last evening, uh, and Elder Sheely on uh, a man a Tuesday night. Uh, so what God is doing is marvelous in our eyes and we thank him and praise him. Uh, so those of you that are here, we're certainly expecting more to be here, but uh, Bishop David Horn uh, is with us and he should be uh, here coming out shortly. Uh, so let's just keep our minds stayed on the Lord and just thank God for the reaping of souls that are going to come because of your effort, because of your diligence, and because of your service unto the God of our salvation. Uh, we're getting ready to get started. It's going to be all right. Anybody got a testimony real quick? Somebody got a testimony for the Lord, uh, something that God has done for you. I was just in the pastor's meeting earlier today at the council, uh, and uh, District uh, Suffolk and Bishop uh, Daryl Cummings, who is the chairman now of the Ohio District Council, and uh, Suffolk and Bishop uh, Michael Cooper is the assistant. Uh, but he got up saying that at some point in time, uh, uh, his dream center that has about maybe four floors, uh, uh, the sprinkler system busted, uh, and it caused huge damage uh, in that center. Uh, and it was going to cost them uh, uh, about $150,000 uh, to get all of the roofs repaired. There's about six roofs on it. Uh, and so they raised about 60000 he said, and didn't know where and how they were going to get the remainder of the funds. Uh, and he had been praying uh, and talking to the city council because it services uh, the entire city there. They've done an excellent job. Uh, and certainly what happened, he says, they were going to show him how to navigate to get a grant uh, for 90000 to finish the roofs. And he said all of a sudden he got a call, a man from the city council, and they said, listen, uh, uh, Reverend Cummings, we're going to give you uh, from the coffers of the city of Wheeling the $90,000 uh, to finish the roof that you are having trouble with. So we just began to praise God. It was just a wonderful time of testimonies. Amen. We got a report from a, a suffering bishop, uh, uh, Parker, a suffering bishop Parker, and uh, he had cancer terrible cancer where he said I couldn't get out the bed I couldn't roll over he said I could do nothing for myself uh, and he began to pray and ask God for healing and deliverance that God if you are who you say you are and he is uh, then I believe and expect God to do a miracle uh, and then brothers and sisters when we found out that he had stage four cancer stage four cancer and he got up at the council in the in the board meeting and said god healed me in jesus name uh, hallelujah the doctors were wondering what happened uh, how did it occur but he's walking around and he's uh, giving us praise and glory to god every time i see him uh, he get ready to hug me and say god healed me god healed me that's something to be excited about that's something to be enthused about so god's just working miracles uh, and he's not just doing it in zanesville or springfield or columbus uh, but guess what god's doing it right here in Cleveland, Ohio at 14102 Harvard Avenue as well. So I'm going to decrease and allow the Spirit of the Lord to increase as we get ready to introduce and present, amen, our speaker who has done an excellent job during the preparatory time of September, uh, that that he gave us and he uh, 
ingested and introduced to us, it certainly uh, reaped the benefits as we've seen over a man uh, this past month. So without further ado, it certainly affords me a tremendous privilege and honor to once again introduce uh, uh, the master designer of the Harvest Celebration in the person of Bishop David Horn. Uh, won't you put your hands together and give God praise as he comes in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody good today? Good, good. So how how is the four weeks since the last time we talked? We see increase? All right, let me share something with you all. You are head of the game in reference of the invites. Uh, normally the invites we center on December, but to have, I think, I, we just talked probably about 60 or 70 uh, invites in four weeks is an amazing, amazing. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for the Lord using you. Uh, that, that's so important. So uh, we probably need to get the report. Um, is he here? Is he, does he have the report? Okay. Of the uh, turn in invites and what and how many uh, first time visitors we've had since the first time I came. Okay, so what I would need is the first time visitors number that's invited uh, for the harvest. How many people have showed up thus far since the first time I was here? Uh, probably between 60, 65, 70. We have, we have about 60 on the wall coming to where we have names here. So I'm sure we have over 150 people. Okay, okay, that, you, that you've invited? Well, yes, that have show, actually shown up. Oh, 150 show up. <laughs> uh huh, uh huh. All right, give me some more. And you'll, and you'll give me the, the overall numbers uh, that will be uh, invited for the month of December. All right, let's give the Lord a hand and praise for that. All right, <clears throat> we're trying to get our PowerPoint up there. And we give honor to the Lord today. We thank God for you all. Give honor to uh, Bishop Brantley and also First Lady Brantley. Uh, we give amen. We show respect and honor to you all and you that are here. All right. So what we want to talk tonight is about culture, changing the culture. We, we did really good in the last four weeks of the response. Amen. But we want to keep it going. Keep it going. All right. Write this down. No system, no growth. If you have no system in place, uh, you have no growth. That simply is that what we're doing is creating a system. All right. Of inviting people. Number one, write that down. So no system, no growth. So number one would be inviting people, a continuation of inviting people. That's why I come back in four weeks. People are all excited, and now it, the 10, the excitement kind of drops. And that's why we do, this is called the follow-up, phase two. So no system, no growth. So number one is we want to continue to invite people because the overall group, the overall membership haven't caught on yet, all right? And the only way they'll, <coughs> they'll catch on is when they continue to see visitors. And that's, that's, what, that's what we call the second wave. Write this down, the second wave. The second wave is once there's excitement in the air, visitors are coming, people are getting saved, then we'll reach to that second group of church membership that will participate, hopefully, in, in, in this particular thing. So setting the culture uh, is what I see. Everybody say what I see, what I hear, what I say, and what I do. Did y'all get that? Let's say what I see, what I say, what I speak, and what I do. 
I need y'all to say it. We need some more energy in the church. All right, what I see, come on. Uh, now that sounds like a, what I say, what I hear, what I do. So we have, Bishop, we have to continue to do this, all right, because you, some of you, will, I want everybody to look up, some of you will miss this, um, um, and not intentionally, but you have those that will say, well, what happened? What happened to the people? What happened? You know, they don't say it, they whisper it. It has to be a changed culture, all right? We have to continue to do this. Now, the amazing thing about this here and about what Bishop Brantley and First Lady Brantley in this church is that you are engaged. You are engaged, all right? And when you become engaged, the Bible says, he that has an ear, let him what? Hear, all right? In other words, you have to be engaged, open, open to, all right? So it's important. So we need to, these next two days, we're gonna talk about changing the culture and constantly doing what we're, what we're doing. I had a chance to somewhat see some of the services and uh, just the uh, Elder Lifford, uh, did an, you did an amazing job. Elder Lifford, I watched you, the excitement, and there was a couple of other people here that presented really well. I don't know who it, who, who it was, it was a lady uh, here. Uh, did you have a couple of people Right, her? Amazing. That's amazing. And uh, as a second voice, also as an observer, that's very exciting. All right? Because death and life is in the power of the what? Of the tongue. So we have to keep saying it over and over. How do we change the culture? How do we change the culture? Number one, repetition. Everybody say repetition. Easy. Often. And habit. Write that down. All right, let's say repetition, easy, often, habit. Say it again, repetition, easy, often, habit. I need everyone to say it, repetition, easy, often, habit. That has to be instilled in what you all doing, all right? From the inviting to the follow-up to the emails, all right? Uh, to the follow-up, getting people back, because we're gonna eventually work on members that are not, are not back yet. And what we wanna do is set something special. Bishop Brantley, yes, you had a question? Habit. So we do things over and over again, all right? We invite people over and over again. We give that response, we contact them, we make phone calls to them. All right, it, even we visit them, all right? So that does two things. It puts in the spiritual psyche of the church overall what we do. And then number two, it allows us uh, access to the membership uh, of the new members because we want to fulfill G uh, Matthew 28, 19. Do you know Matthew 28, 28 19 is a commandment? Can y'all say that? It's a commandment. Can y'all say that? A lot of churches are walking in disobedient when they don't go out and reach out, all right? What has happened here is the culture has changed. COVID has changed the culture. And so people are more used to now staying home, more used to uh, um, um, coming to church whenever it's convenient because a culture has been created. Are y'all with me? All right, so the only way you can do that is you have to put something in place, all right? It's just like an addict. An addict, uh, they have the 12-step program of alcohol. In other words, when a person is trying to uh, 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 kick the habit, uh, you have to put something in place. If you don't put something in place, they will go back to what they normally do. What I'm saying to you all today, if you, if, if you don't uh, master this, then guess what saints are going to do? You're going to go back to what you're convenient to, all right? That's what I say uh, to Bishop Brantley and 
uh, to the church here is I go all over the country and teach this, but they still, some of them still don't get it. You got to keep doing this, all right? Okay? And so he says here, uh, let's go to uh, Mark. I said, outstanding preacher. Uh, uh, he has his own way. I know he came from good stock. I listened to him. I said, this man preaching up in here. This guy, this guy, he ain't saying, he ain't just throwing some words out, you know. And I'm not saying that because he's, he's in my presence. I'm just saying it because it is what it is. That's why we got to get people in this church. So, Pastor, what's happening is we have maybe 20%, 15, 20% of the church that's hearing this. What we want to do is we want to move to 90%. So it's going to take some time for us to get that area. How many remember Rick Warren? Rick Warren. Rick Warren has a diamond-shaped uh, plan on how he uh, brings people, uh, new members in. And you have 101, you have old class on 101, 102, 103, and back to the diamond. Even the average member can explain that to new uh, first-time guests, all right? That's what we want. We want to get you where you can explain to them, you know, new members class, uh, discipleship class, uh, those different things that will contain, write this down, contain the game. We want to contain the game. Like, I think you had, how many people were baptized? Uh, the last two were baptized? Okay, all right. So two were baptized. This is going to happen. There's going to be an explosion in this church in remembrance of baptisms and people filled with the Holy Ghost. But you cannot, you cannot stop. You've got to move forward regardless, all right? Okay, so Mark 4 and 26. Do you have it? Okay, uh, read. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should what? Cast seed in the ground and should sleep. Why should he sleep? He has understanding and revelation, all right? He's not worrying about how it's going to grow. He's walking in principle, and so he should sleep. And night and day, the seed should what? Spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. If we continue to invite people, we don't know how God is going to do this, all right? For the earth bringeth forth what? Read with me. Fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn. So, so the blade is something like what we just saw this last four weeks. I said the blade is what we just saw for the last four weeks. What do you mean by the blade? By the people coming. I think one of your Sundays you had over 30 first-time guests. Everybody said, that's the blade. Everybody said, that's the blade. All right. All right. He says here, then he says the full corn. He said the blade, then the ear, then the full corn. So someone can say this is the development of faith, all right, a development of process. When the fruit is brought forth, immediately it's put to the sickle because the harvest has come. So uh, in, in grading this uh, uh, culture, uh, we have to continue to uh, repetition, easy, often, have it, all right? Because you're going to be known for 25, 30 plus visitors every Sunday. Write that down. We're going to be known to have 25, 30, 40, 40, 50 guests a Sunday. That's going to be normal. And when you have more first-time visitors, you have more opportunity for them to get saved. Most of the time when we are calling, uh, we have just saints in. All right? And I'm so excited when I come in December because I'll be able to work the altar. Uh, the Lord has given me a real strong uh, altar ministry. And uh, uh, whatever that, I think that date is. Uh, do you have that? Do you have my? Um, do you have my uh, phone? Uh, that date. I want y'all to really emphasize on this date to bring new, new folks in. Amen. I just believe God. One Sunday we baptized fifty. Uh, oh yeah, at Bishop Shoel's church, we ran out of clothes. Um, there. This is what God graced me to do. I couldn't say this a few week, few years ago, because I was, you know, still learning. Um, but if you bring them, I believe God will save them. Is that all right? Amen. All right. So December, 
the fourth, fifth, and sixth is going to be the Harvest Revival. And you really want to emphasize those three dates, but more the fourth. Let's try to get 100 people uh, on that Sunday. And out of 100 people, thank you, out of 100 people, we should have at least 50 guests. Let's, let's believe God for 25 or 30 people get baptized. You got to put it out there. Tell somebody, you got to put it out there. All right? All right, so, so we see the process there. All right? Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 2. We're talking about creating a culture. All right? Yeah. Are you there? Now, uh, tell me how do y'all feel? I need about four or five people to jump real quick and tell me how, since, since we taught, how do you feel about this program? Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, anyone else? Wow, I saw Bishop, you did an excellent job. Um, thank God I had a chance to see how you welcomed the people, how you all gave out, you gave out, I think, your, your presence. Uh, Bishop walked and began to greet everyone. That's setting the culture. You hear what I'm saying? Everybody said, that's setting the culture. Look at somebody and say, I love you, but I'm tired of looking at you. We, no, that is, listen, saints, that is even a culture. Did you all hear what I just said? I said, that is even a culture. You get so fixed with, with, with people not coming in, first-time visitors not coming in. You know what I mean? You're good with that. You should be upset with that. That's what we did at Greater Bethany. We had Greater Bethany. People getting baptized all during the week, getting the Holy Ghost during the week. We had the upper room all week because Bishop McMurray, the late Bishop McMurray, set that kind of culture. All right? And so when we set that type of culture, you know, some, some churches have surrendered the fact that that's all we got. We assume that that's all we got. But they don't invest finances and time in evangelism. Most of the people I talk to, most of the pastors I talk to, they says, no, we don't have a system. But you want to grow. All right? Don't make sense to me. All right, the book of Acts chapter number two. All right? Are y'all getting some out of this? Was there anybody else? Uh, two more people. Anyone else? What, what you get? What you get? What you working with? Because they're not coming here. Yeah, yeah, they're not coming. You know, back in the day when we used to say that, you know, people come in, their people will come in, but God is waiting on you. One more person. Did we get a brother? Is it a brother? To save, to save the, is it a one brother? Look at, they all looking down, putting glasses all down. Yeah, this brother, this, I want you to say something too because I saw you say, so I better say something on the behalf of the brothers because the sisters are taking it over. All right, your name? A lot of apostolic churches are, they don't have a system. And um, uh, some of them don't invest in evangelism. You know, they do the same traditional thing as go out and knock on doors. Nowadays, people not open their doors. And if they do open the doors, they think you're Jehovah's Witness. 
Are y'all with me? Wow. All right, the brothers. Let's give the brothers a round of applause. All right, let's look at Acts chapter number 43. We're going to get to our PowerPoint just in a minute. It says, uh, let's, go to, let's go to 242. Can I get you all to read? All right. Are you all ready? Let's read. And they continued steadfast. Stop. Stop right there. Underline steadfast. That is the position that they had, the New Testament church. This is setting the culture. All right? They continued and they were steadfast. That's what you have to be. Y'all have to be continued and steadfast. In the apostles, what? Their teaching and what? Fellowship. Now, fellowship, that's the reason why COVID-19 is an isolation we miss fellowship one of the greatest things is people need to come to the church to have what fellowship and I said fellowship is all the fellows in the ship going in the right direction all right so fellowship is important it brings bonding it brings encouragement and so forth and breaking up what bread that's important because when you when people sit down and talk they're more open uh, in reference to that, and in what? In prayer. So that's what the culture was, all right, back in then. And fear came upon every what? Many wonders and signs were done by the what? So when they were lined up with, when they were lined up with, with steadfastness, lined up with the doctrine, lined up with the fellowship, and, and breaking of bread, and prayers, the power of God moved. Are y'all with me? And all that believe were what? Together. If we can get the, all, all the church, all Zion together to invite people to church, what a time when we would have. This place would be filled all the way back. And that's what we need to work towards. All right? Remember, faith as a grain of a what? Okay, you are the mustard seed. You are the mustard seed. We have to look at this, at this uh, culture thing from six months to maybe a year in reference of getting the membership acclimated back in inviting people to church. And they had all things in common. Okay, so they believed together, all right? And they had all things in what? In common, all right? They believed together and sold their possession and goods and parted them to all men as what? Every man that what? Other words, their, their teaching and the culture made them to give up, to depart with their, with their personal things because they knew the mission. They knew the commitment, all right? All right? They knew what the assignment was, all right? If we get everyone like that, you all are the start of this, then you're going to find out increase. And they continue. Hear that word again? Continue daily. Oh, now this is powerful right here. Everybody say, this is powerful right here. Daily at the church, daily praying, daily fellowshipping, and we're doing good if we do Sunday and Wednesday. Daily involvement, daily harvest. Write this down. Daily involvement, daily harvest. I know Bishop McMurray used to have uh, numbers up into prayer thing, you could, he was up here and you can see the numbers. We had baptized 750 or something like that. And then somebody get the Holy Ghost. We had 300 or 400 people getting the Holy Ghost because that culture was set. Okay? So they were daily with one accord. Look at it. See the mindset? They're on one accord. All right? They're in concert in the temple, breaking bread from house to house and did eat their meat with what? Gladness and singleness of heart. From the temple to the house, from the house to the temple. 
Repeat that to me. From the temple to the house, from the house to the temple. Everybody say that. From the temple to the house, from the house to the temple. Say it again. From the temple to the house, house to the temple. All right? Because really the church started in the house. All right? Okay? So, and praising God, look at their attitude and having favor with all the people, people in the community. And the Lord added to the church what? Daily such as should be saved. So this, this, is, this is the culture of the New Testament church. All right? So if we're constantly inviting people to church, the man of God is preaching the gospel. Because the enemy, he likes to reverse. What he likes to reverse is if you don't have people getting the Holy Ghost of people, then you question it. Ah, the devil wants you to question that. There will come a time that it's going to be like water, amen, pouring into this house where people are going to get saved, people are going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Are, you, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Change, write this down, change the culture, change the church. Change the culture, change the church. On Monday, somebody should be calling, or Monday and Tuesday, calling those visitors last week. A letter should be sent out. A phone call should be made. If they, Bishop, if they have visitation needs, uh, everything is run by the bishop, run by him. If you go out to prayer, prayer, you go out two by two. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because you're trying to create, write this down, a relationship with that, with that uh, potential member. And everybody's not going to be baptized yet in Jesus' name. Everybody's not going to be filled with the Holy Ghost yet. You have to allow them to simmer in the church. And, and don't try to force them to be baptized in Jesus' name. Uh-huh. They have to be a part of the family. Y'all hear what I'm saying? All right, how many invited some people uh, th- these last four weeks that's in the, in the church. Raise your hand. Keep your hand up. Oh, keep your hand up, please. Keep your hand up. So what I need from you is I need you to follow up on those people you invited and get them to come back to church. Find out what their needs are. It's based upon relationship. Everything is what? Based upon what? Relationship. Relationship is the glue to hold things together. Are y'all with me? All right. So this is the culture that we need to set up, all right? All right. What I need um, um, is also the dates of Sundays that in December the people are coming because we want to give that to Bishop. So Bishop has 30, first is 40, the second Sunday, 20. Someone said Christmas, everybody shut down. Christmas is the greatest time where families are together that you can invite people to church. Let me say that again. Because, you know, we just just say everybody shut out. Well, that's what you say. You know why? Because you created a culture like that. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm really preaching really well. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Well, you know, we don't do nothing in December. Yes, you do. You go out and have fellowship. You have Christmas parties. You have all those different things. You need to... Oh, I hear the Lord. You need to work that opportunity. Write that down. You need to work the opportunity in the month of December uh, uh, to invite people to come to church. Thanksgiving is here at the same time. People love to eat. Remember, we talked about eating, fellowshipping. All right? Okay. All right, so we're going to start here with the power of, of, of invitation here. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter number 22. All right? How many got some people that don't show up in church?
Oh, look, let, let's give the Lord a hand praise. How many, how many, how many want to try to bring someone this coming Sunday? Are you preaching, Bishop? Oh, y'all got to bring, this colored man can preach. Y'all need to bring somebody. I'm serious. I am so serious. I mean, he's precise. He's laser focused. He gives you substance. All right, we thank God for the revivalists and they, they give us a whole different prism. But it's not like your pastor. All right. Tell somebody, say, you need to bring somebody this Sunday. Come on, look at them. Look them in the eye. Yeah, like, look them in the eye. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? All right. What is our goal? Our goal is 2,000. I need to know what the numbers is on tomorrow. Because you should be at between three to 400. You need to be around that, that number. We need, every time I meet, there should be another four, 400 so we can reach the 2,000 mark. Okay, you have them tomorrow. And then we want to split you up in groups. I want uh, four groups. If you can give me four good leaders that can help uh, energize the group to reach their numbers. Just to, to be clear, 2,000 is invitation. Right. Yes, and all thy getting get what? So well, you heard what Bishop said. It was invitations. All right. Look at somebody and smile. Say, if we did that daily, two thousand is nothing. <laughs> we need. We're trying to get y'all to do a week. If y'all, <laughs> we can get y'all inviting people daily. See what I'm saying? Because that's where our focus is. Yes. It's just inviting people to come. Yeah, did you hear what he said? All right, so, so what counts as an invitation is someone agrees to come to church, all right? I, we want 2,000 of those. Understand? All right. So it says here, uh, do you all have Matthew 22 and 8 and 10? Then said he to his servants, the wedding is what? All right. But they which were bidden were not what? All right. They were not worthy. They didn't see righteous down value. How you can get people to come to church, they have to seek a sense of value. And their value comes where their needs are. If they're going through a divorce or if they're going through uh, a health issue, if they're going through a family problem, those are the areas that the church can be able to offer some type of help uh, for them. You need to look out for those individuals that you invite. Some of you already know. Some of you already know individuals uh, that are going through, and you need to go and invite them to church. All right? These are the individuals... Um, they had relationship with this, uh, with this man, uh, but they, they, they chose not to come this time, all right? He says, go ye therefore into the what? Highways, as many as ye shall find, bid them to the what? Other words, other words, I want you to go out, out of your comfort zone, out of your place of influence, and I want you to go out and invite them. Okay, that's important. I believe, God, that y'all can get 50 in one Sunday. I believe y'all can do it this Sunday. How many believe that? All right, so since y'all did that, y'all raise y'all hand. Amen. We need, we need some, hey, you, you, can you take some pictures? I need you to take some pictures of these folks. So, so anybody, anybody can just raise their hand. Look at somebody. Say anybody can raise their hand. Come on, open your mouth and say that. <laughs> All right, when I ask them to stand up, just start snapping. Just snap. Snap away. How many believe we can invite 50 this Sunday? Come on, raise your hand. Now y'all doing like this. How many believe that? Stand on your feet if you believe it. Stand on your feet. That, that means you're going to participate. That means you're going to participate. Yeah, yeah, snap them, snap them. 
So we can put them on the Facebook. We Facebook and everything. All right, so how many we got? Wait a minute, stand on your feet. Somebody give me a quick count. Can you give me a quick count? Those are standing. Well, that's, that's, that, your job is as a messenger. Just invite. If they tell you no, don't, don't have a bad day, just keep it moving. We have 19, so, so we're going to have 50. So I'm asking everyone to at least invite three to four on Sunday. Is that all right? All right, any question? All right, so we're there. All right, so let's move to the next slide. Let's read. So those servants went out into the what? And gathered them together, all as many as they found, both what? Notice that, bad and good. You can't be the judge. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And amen. I asked her 50 times, asked her 51 times. Uh, he, he don't want to come to church. That's what you're saying. You don't know where he's at in his life. So both bad and good, all right? That's for the religious folks. The religious folks always spotting of who they think is coming to church. And the wedding was what? Furnished with what? All right? Harvest celebration. Can y'all say that? We want to celebrate the harvest. Amen. We want to see 50, 60, amen, 70. Amen. Everybody say 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. You know what I just did? I'm putting that in your spirit. Faith coming by what? Hearing, Hearing by what? All right. So, we, amen. So, we're believing God. Y'all did 30 uh, two weeks ago. You only got to do 20 more. Amen. You talking about this man preaching. He going to preach up a storm. You bring 50 up in here. He might run all the way back to the thing. Hallelujah. You know what? You, you know, let me say what the Lord said. There's certain things that tapped into pastors and those certain spiritual buttons that are pushed that if they're pushed correctly, uh, that pastor and that church is going to the next level. Do you hear what I'm saying? All right. I've pastored several years, and sometimes the church can make you happy, and sometimes the church can make you not happy. This is the time to make him happy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so, all right, so let's move to the next slide. The guiding principle behind the power of invitation in the fact that the invitation is extended to those um, who would likely see an inherent value in accepting the invitation. So it goes back to, you know, your question about what, what if they say no, you just keep going. You just haven't hit that person. All right? Okay, that's, that's very important there. All right, let's move on. What do I mean? Let's read. When the servants were what? Given a directive to what? They were told that those who were previous invited was not what? Notice, they were given a directive. You are given a directive, all right? Not to put your two cent in, but just follow the instruction. There was a simple instruction that God gave Joshua to give to the people of, of with that wall, was to walk around that wall, right? All right, so sometimes God chooses the foolish things to confine the wise. The only thing we ask is a smile and greet. Look at somebody say, smile and greet. Smile and greet. Say it again. Smile and greet. Say it again. Smile and greet. Say it again. Smile. I don't care how crazy it sounds. Say it. All right. Okay, y'all. Okay, y'all. Y'all ready, huh? Okay, let's move to the next slide. Who was the sister invited to 50? Is she here? Huh? Now, check this out. She, she not here, but she got it. I don't know. Was she here during the time that we were teaching? All right. And she took that by faith and moved quickly. All right, and invited 50. All right? Take what I'm saying. Amen. Start inviting people. All right, continue inviting. They were not worthy because the Bible said they made what? Light of the invitation. They made fun of it and went out with their ways. One to his farm, another to his what? Merchandise and those 
who did not go their way, they mistreated and even killed the what? Servants that were sent. Let's move on. So they did not appreciate the value of invitation. Uh, what God says is to go to the highways, as many as you find good and bad, invite them. You notice that the servant did not what? Between what? All right, let's move on. All right, so you can accept or reject. Read, everyone, please. All right, I think that what causes us to be more effective is understanding the power of invitation. Everything goes back to, to Adam and Eve. What did Adam and Eve have? Choice. Do you hear what I'm saying? We all make what choices. It's that we think is important and value those choices uh, we, we, we go into alignment with. All right, let's move on. Okay, everyone read. An invitation what? Okay, so now when you start inviting people, make, 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 make sure it's, it's special. Get excited about what is about to take place, all right? All right, how many, how many been to a, a party out when you were in the world? Raise your hand. Oh, look at y'all, y'all party, huh, y'all? Okay, all right. When that invitation was brought to you, did that person make it exciting? Huh? Did they tell you who was going to be there, right? Uh-huh, they told you what kind of food was going to be there, right? Plenty of women, plenty of women, they're going to be there too. The brother's looking for the women. Oh, y'all laughing, but it was serious. When I walked in there, it was just all brothers. I'm leaving right now. Nothing to drink. What kind of party is this? Look, write this down. Preparation makes the difference. Preparation makes the difference. Harvest celebration. We're preparing for a great month. The end of the year. We're preparing for a great month. All right? An invitation makes us feel what? Wanted and what? Accepted. So, amen. Put your twist on it. Put your uh, excitement about Harvest Celebration. What is Harvest Celebration? It's a time that we celebrate the goodness of God in this community, uh, and, and we want you to be a part of it. All right? We believe in God that one day you're going to get saved. We don't tell them that, that directly, so let me say that. We invite, all right? Y'all got that? All right, let's move on. All right, everyone read out loud. Read. Mm -hmm. All right, we have any wives here? Any wives? Happy wives? If you're happy, you know it, clap your hand. Come on, raise your hand, all right. I remember that first invitation. First lady, do you remember that first, first outing that she's shaking her head like, yeah, I remember that. Uh, was, was he on his P's and Q's? So look at it. She said, yeah, he was on. Uh, did, did, you think, did you think what you were going to say to her? Uh, did you have some kind of format in your mind or what, what you were? Uh, <laughs> did y'all hear what he said? He always had a formula. He knew what he was going to say, how he was going to say it. All right? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's the same thing with an invitation. You got your preparation. It's going to help in the invitation. Write that down. Preparation is going to help in the invitation. You got to think about what you're going to say. You know what I mean? Not just say, we want to invite you to church. No, no. Why would I want to go to your church? All right? This city is full of churches. Y'all hear what I'm saying? All right. A business person invites a client out to lunch. A big deal. That's a big deal. That's talking about money. All right. Let's move to the next slide. Both Jesus, both God and Jesus extend the invitation. People extend the invitation to their families and friends. All right. Let's move on. We have divine invitations. You have human invitations. All right? There's some people that you're going to invite that's going to have some divine invitation when they come to this church. Pastor's going to say something that's going to trigger something. All right? There is human invitation where we meet 
and uh, there's an assignment or something that, that we both see uh, human invitation. Let's move on. All right, read. Come now, what? God invites the sinner. Come now and let us what? Oh, y'all sound like a church. All right? Offering forgiveness of sins to those who are willing to what? Okay, you got to, and I want to say this to y'all. You have to see the temperament of the world's mindset, and it even comes to the church. You know, trying to get people to the altar and get them to realize that they need to repent uh, is, is not that easy when we look at 30 years ago. The church was in a whole different separate mindset. The church was aggressive. The church even prayed, prayed. The church laid hands. The church did some real, but now we live in a society and a generation where, where people don't put church at the top of their list. People are trying all kind of stuff. The culture wars, TikTok. How many, how many have seen TikTok? TikTok. How many have seen TikTok? Y'all need to get a TikTok to see what people are doing. Y'all hear what I'm saying? All right, that's a culture. Ten seconds with you, they download something in you that will affect your life. Facebook, same thing. Instagram, same thing. All right? It, write this down. Everything deals with programming. Everything deals with programming. Programming television, programming on, um, on uh, YouTube, programming. We're all being programmed something. All right? All right, let's, let's move, move on. Everybody read. Read loud, please. Okay, let's stop. Let's read on, th on the count of three. One, two, three. Read. Is there any thirsty people uh, in the world today? All right, okay. All right, he's offering those willing to hear that which satisfy, truly satisfy them. Let's move on. All right, Jesus invited the weary and heavy, heavy laden. He says what? Come to me, all ye are labor and heavy laden, offering spiritual rest for those willing to become his disciple. Let's move on. The Holy Spirit invites uh, the, the thirsty. Let's read. All right, to all who desires the water of life. Move on. All right. We see that God's message is often in a form of of invitation. So let me just stop there. When you're inviting someone, God is using, the, using you to give them an opportunity to receive salvation. Let me say this again. When you are inviting, God is using you. All right? Everybody say, God is using me as an opportunity for that person to receive salvation. So in matter of fact, y'all would not be here without invitation. You wouldn't be saved. Some of you saved 10 years, 15 years, three years, four years, amen. If it wasn't for that person constantly coming to you, that was actually God coming to you, amen. Some of you ran from the church. Some of you ran from the people that you were trying, they were inviting you. But thank God they got through because you are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. All right? Very important. It should not be surprised. Surprise us, therefore, the servant of God would uh, reach out to the lost in a form of an invitation. Let's move on. All right, would y'all read in, uh, human invitation as prophesied? Read. All right, so that's a form of what? An invitation. As foreseen by Isaiah. Who is Isaiah? The ego eye prophet. Many would invite their friends to learn more about God. That's what we're doing. All right? Let's move on. Uh, let's look at human invitation. All right? As practice. By Andrew, who invited Peter to meet who? 
and Philip who invited Nathaniel to meet who? The Samaritan woman who invited his, her neighbors to, to who? Let's go to St. John chapter number one. And believe it or not, the friends that you have, even the enemies that you have, somewhat God has connected you with them, um, um, I, not only just to have a friendship, but also a relationship in salvation as well is important. It's important that you know that what you're doing is sacred. It's a sacred cause for the gospel, inviting people to church. All right, that's important. Uh, let's look at uh, St. John chapter 1, verse 35. Do you have it? Say amen. All right. Uh, begin to read. So that was a form of what? An invitation. You see how that? Let's read on. All right, so another form of invitation uh, there that was going. And that's what people want to see. You're inviting them to church so they can see Jesus. Are y'all with me? Let's look at the next verse, verse 40. Read. So now what's happening is uh, Jesus ministering uh, to the future here of Cephas, all right? All right, and the day following, Jesus would go forth in Galilee and find it Philip and said to him, follow me. And now Philip of Bethesda was the city of Andrew and Peter. So now what we see is these connections. Write this down. I am a connector. I am a connector. All right? Somebody connected with me, I'm connecting with someone else. All right? So, it's important. How many believe we're going to be able to invite 50 this Sunday? Raise your hand. Okay? Okay? All right. I called pastor on Monday or Tuesday. I told him, give me the numbers. All right? He gives me the numbers and tells me everything of what's going on uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. All right? So, let's move to the next one. So we have a Matthew who gave a feast to introduce Jesus. Guess what we're doing? We're giving a feast. Harvest celebration to introduce them to who? Jesus. Or uh, by Cornelius who invited his whole family and friends to hear Peter. All right? Invitation. Let's move on. We see many came to know what? An invitation, though it can be today, consider the power of invitation. So, so in this conclusion, in this segment, it is very important that you know that you're doing something divinely inspired and divinely what the Father called in Matthew 28, 19. All right, and that's the goal, all right? We find out in culture, we have to continue to do the same thing to get the same results. I don't believe that God is giving you this beautiful building just to have it empty or have it 20% filled. I got one clap, Jesus. I got one clap. So what we're looking at, class, we continue to do this, and the core group is going to get bigger and bigger. In other words, people are going to, 
begin to acknowledge and invite people. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. All right? So what I want to do is break you off in groups. We're going to do some, some role playing tonight. Uh, this is my time look like where I'm at. What you? Okay, all right. I need four of your leaders that can inspire and motivate the group uh, here. We want to block you off in four groups uh, there. Um, I don't know if they're here tonight, but you can have them come up. Y'all can come on up. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for these. We have two more. All right. All right. Elder Benson, huh? All right. Your name? Tina. Tina. Mark, Allen. Mark Allen. Yeah, I saw you up announcing something. You're announcing something. The, oh, she's the offering lady? Okay, all right, all right. But she also announced something else. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Now, what we want to do, we want to write this down. In the next four weeks, we want to reach at least 500 people. And you are taking this assignment. That means that you're going to have 50 or plus more people you're going to meet with these individuals uh, at least once or twice uh, in these next four weeks. You're going to uh, call them, inspire them uh, to reach their goal, okay? So we're going to start with, uh, Pastor, do you, you want to help me with, uh, with first of all, this elder? Uh, do you think you can get 500? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. I like that going on. It's like uh, he's about to do one of these numbers here. Can you can you give me ten people that you want to put with this? Put put with them. Okay. Okay. Y'all want to? Y'all want to come again? Yes, yes, as you come. Yeah, yeah, y'all separate. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's right. Y'all need to start moving. Okay, I need y'all to y'all to go with your with your leaders quickly. That's good. That's very good. Now, why, why is his number, Bishop? How many people you got down there? He got. Oh, 
All right, all right. Get everybody's attention. Listen. So, in the next four weeks, we need you to reach 500. So that means, that means in the next four weeks, that means we need to split up the amount equal to four. So how many do we have here? So, so, so how many, how many, let's divide that into 500 is what? Divide. So 500 divided by nine. Each person. All right. So they'll do 55 per person. 55, y'all doing 55. So y'all got to start tomorrow. 55, each individual. Do we add them to the number who's already invited? Because I've already invited 35. No, this is going to be a different number. It's fresh, it's anointing. You see how she tried to get out of that real good, huh? She's going to add it up, all, all that. You know. No, this is a new thing. This is a new thing. Yeah, he's doing it. Well, you can do it. You, everybody point at it and say, she can do it. This is easy. Okay. Okay, so, so, so each of you will invite 55 in four weeks. Y'all can do that? Okay, all right. All right, so now we're going to give you, we, we want you to think about a name for your team. It could be the uh, Judah team. It could be uh, Soul Patrol. It could be um, whatever. I need you to start thinking uh, right now about what your name is going to be. All right? Most definitely. All right, did you hear what Bishop said? So we want this group to get bigger. So I need you to recruit, but I need all of you all to recruit groups, uh, you know, for, for, for this team. Y'all got that? So we can expand it. Okay, so Excellent idea. Yeah, All right. So, so Bishop gave us a great, a, a great idea. Listen. So we need to invite other people that are members of this church, a part of your group. We said that to them. When you begin to invite other people to be a part of your group, you need to meet with them twice, twice in the four weeks. Twice. That's going to, yeah, that's going to expand your group and it'll bring your numbers down. Does that make sense? Yes. Instead of 55, it may be 30. See what I'm saying? All right. So y'all want to start recruiting now. You want to start inviting now. All right. Y'all got that? All right. Let me run over here. Just. Oh, also, I need you to work on a name right now of what you're going to call your group. All right. We, we call uh, the Judah team. Uh, we call um, uh, the Great Commission Whatever, whatever name that y'all come up with, we need you. Well, if, if they're like that, well, if they're like that, then you know you just keep it moving. I mean, they don't. If they don't want to participate in getting their name, then they're. Okay, okay, but that, that's fine. That's right. Just invite them, all right? Y'all need to get your name. Find out what your name is. All right, so, so you need to find out what you're going to call the name of this group. Okay. Judah Praise, um, Great Commission, uh, whatever name, name that you want to call. All right, so we said 55 per individual here, but also, as Bishop said, we want to invite to this group more members so they expand, so you may get another 10 or 15 or 20. You want to start that Sunday, okay? We want to invite, invite that. So work on your name right now so we can find out what, what your name is, and we'll work from there. Any questions? All right. We're going to have our 50, right? Yes, sir. 
Okay. Yes. Okay, I'm going to find out why, how, how did y'all end up. But the, the way you can do that is invite people to your group. So all of you all, not just him, all of you say, hey, girl, I want you to be part of our team. Our team is called on Sunday. All right. Y'all got a big, y'all got a big group, don't y'all? Wow. We need to, we need to, we, huh? Huh? Oh, you're the best. Okay, we're going to see now. Listen, listen, get everybody's attention. Get everybody's attention. How y'all doing? Y'all doing fine? Yeah. All right, so, so it's about 55 per person right now. Um, uh, but Bishop had a great idea. On Sunday, you need to start recruiting other people in your team. So that number will come down. It could be 30, 25. All right, so you, you want to recruit on Sunday. You need to meet with your group twice in the month, all right? Your number is 500 in four weeks. You want to invite 500 in four weeks. Any questions? So that means each person needs to invite 55. Five, right now, mm-hmm, right. If it's on the 10, we get more people. The numbers will drop. Per week, I guess. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. All right. You was elder there. All right. Young people. Young people. Right. Right. Oh, bless you. Been a long time. Yeah, long time. You need to. Y'all need to work on the name of your group. Huh? Oh, you, if you want to say you're the best. Call yourself the best. Call those things which be not as though they were. Got a question? No, I was just going to ask the team what do they want to be called. She, she. All right, y'all. Yeah, all right. What have y'all come up with? All right, so we're, okay. All right, so we're ready. Okay, all right. Y'all want to come down. Everybody come down. Everybody come down. Everybody come down. Stay at the altar. All right. Y'all group can be right here. Get, get everybody's attention. Come on, let's move quickly. Y'all move over a little bit. Y'all move over right here. Can y'all move over here? Y'all group, stay with your group. Stay with your group. All right, you all come over here. You all come over here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, y'all gonna be right here. Right here. Right here. Now listen, saints. Uh, get everybody's attention, saints. Shh. We're gonna recruit on Sunday, but be nice in your recruiting. If somebody else uh, got that person, don't fight over them. Uh, oh, Lord Jesus, help us. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is competitive, but it's also healthy. Hear what I'm saying? So in four weeks, how many are we supposed to invite? Which is a total of what? Each group is supposed to have how many? All right, in four weeks, right? All right, let's get with the names. Who wants to start? What's your, what's your name? Yeah, give we are the mighty men and women of valor. Woo! Yes! <laughs> all right, all right. Got some energy. We are the overflow. Oh, the overflow. All right. All right. And we are the sacred soul searchers. Wow. Wow. You want to give them a mic? Y'all ready? Y'all got to be ready when we call on you. Praise the Lord. We are. 
<laughs> we are the best soul winning <laughs> gospel for it's 10 names they want to have and I just can't figure give it us out. One. Give us one. Okay, we're the best and we're going to figure out the rest of the sentence. The you're the best, the you're going to figure thing. out the rest. Yes, we're the best and we'll figure out the rest. How about that? Now, 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 now who here, what group you think is going to win out of the, out of the four? <laughs> Look at her, she's talking, we got to plan everything. This thing is done. I'm telling you, she said it's done, all right? Stick a fork in it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, so, so, so I, I got just a few more minutes before, before we close, all right? I really need you all really to take really close focus on this weekend to invite. Because remember what I said, though we're 20%, eventually we'll bump it up to 30, 40, 50% of the congregation. Remember, everybody say remember. The point at somebody said remember. remember. The congregation is watching you. Did you did y'all hear what I'm saying? When you constantly come out and uh, Bishop, if you could uh, find some time for these four to let them know uh, who they are to the congregation and that they will be coming to you. Uh, the members will be coming to you asking them to be a part uh, of the group. That will be really exciting very important okay all right what is these here oh your business cards oh this will look nice somebody so that everybody have one okay okay good great great job amen thank God for that all right so let's do this let's do this Number two. So y'all gonna win it all, huh? Y'all hear that? Y'all y'all hear that? Y'all y'all hear that? Somebody selling wolf tickets. Wolf tickets. They say you sound like the wolf. We got oh. Okay. Now, now, saints. When I come back in four weeks, the only thing I want to know is what. That's all I want is know what? Number. I'm not speaking in tongues that I have to interpret. I want to know what the numbers are. All right. So, so everyone's going to reach their goal. All right. So we're talking about uh, 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000. That's what we're talking about, right? right. We got a plan. This is a master plan. All right. And Sunday, we're believing God for 50, right? Yes. All right. When do we start working? Now, you got to have a plan for at least 20 or 30 minutes each day to invite people. And breaking into that kind of culture, you have to continue to invite. Very important. The power of invitation requires it's a sacred thing because you are the culture, all right, to invite these people. To invite these people is so they can hear the gospel and so they can be saved. Our next outreach point, Pastor, which I'm going to talk to you about, is how do we reach those that are members of the church they haven't come back? All right? And you're going to be a part of that. Okay? Amen. Uh, Pastor, so I'm going to be talking to you on how we can reach those that are members of this church. We may do something real nice for them on a, a weekend or something and bring them all in. You're, you're all going to participate in it uh, there, and I'll give you the, I'll give you the particulars um, when we get a chance to talk there. All right, I would like you all to take hands. We're going to pray. Any questions? Can we do this? Yes. What do you mean the count? How do you do the count? You fill the account because you're, she's the person that's over it. 
Just so you're going to have to have your system, a spreadsheet. Okay. See, the number two said they already got it. Number two, they said they already got it. They got their spreadsheet. You're going to have to have a, you have to have a spreadsheet. All right. <laughs> oh, Lord, Jesus. Bishop, what kind, these members, they, they, just, they just losing their mind. Talking about that's what winners do. Uh -huh. All right, so you're going to have your spreadsheet. You're going to need a spreadsheet. So the leaders have to individually talk to you all about the numbers. All right, so they can give, you're going to give Bishop a report. Leaders, you're going to give Bishop a report every week of what the numbers look like. All right? We have to do this right now. What did I say? Right now. Right now. No excuses. Jesus sent them out two by two. And when he sent them out two by two in the Gospel of Luke, they came back rejoicing about what God did through them. All right? And so we're sending you out uh, so you can invite people, amen, to the church. All right? Let's gather hands. Bishop, you have anything else or input or that you want to bring? Just want to take the time to say thank you to each of you uh, who really see the value uh, of coming out in preparation for winning souls. Um, we don't want uh, to lose the steam and the impetus and the enthusiasm and by your coming tonight, uh, it proved that. Uh, so keep on doing what you're doing and I believe that Bishop uh, David Horn is doing an outstanding a job of inspiring and encouraging us and organizing us so that our efforts will not be in vain and that we'll see the great harvest that the Lord promised in the last day that we are living in. Uh, so God bless you, and we will be unified, and I do like the competition. Amen? God bless you. All right, I need four people that I need to just put on tape that will record saying, what do they think about a harvest and pastor? I'm gonna need you as well as First Lady in reference of just like a minute of what harvest is to you. I need four, four individuals. Maybe Pastor, maybe you can pick them. Pick them. Um, if you want to be on camera, I, I mean I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but who, who wants to give a, a testimony and a testimony it helps other of churches? What, what harvest uh, means to you. Sister uh, Evangelist uh, Donna, I have one. Evangelist uh, Goodness, two. What about the brothers? Y'all brothers, y'all slacking. What, what about the brothers? We need some help. I, I need a couple of brothers that can speak at harvest. Come on, brothers. Well, I'll, I'll, cho I'll choose, choose Trusty Terry. <laughs> <laughs> he's our event coordinator, so. so he's got to say something. Yeah, he's got to say something. So, so far we have evangelist uh, Donna. We have Evangelist Gooden, and we have Trustee Terry. Uh, that's three. Okay, so they have... All in favor? All in favor? The eyes have it. <laughs> listen, listen. This is what I want you to do uh, before we close. I need you to get on the phone and invite your, invite your brothers and sisters, members of this church, to come tomorrow. I know the council's going on and so forth, but I need you to invite people. When you get home tonight, hey, you need to come out and hear that because we want to extend our core. Would y'all do that? All right, need y'all to do that, all right? Father, we thank you for your love and kindness, your tender mercy. Thank you, God, for this amazing church and what you have done for this church. Thank you, God, for Bishop and also First Lady that you continue to bless them. And Father, I pray, God, for these, this, this, these four teams 
that you would, Lord, anoint him and that they would be inspired. Oh, God, I just believe, God, by the end of the four weeks, each group will have 500 in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that souls will be saved, lives will be touched, souls filled with the Holy Ghost, and we pray all in Jesus' name. Amen. Repeat that to me. Say, this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We claim 2,000 people that we will invite in the harvest in December. In Jesus' name. It's a done deal. Amen. 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 All right, I need those, I need those, four, uh, those four people real quick.